Acropora reproduction in our hobby is almost always done by just cutting fragments. We don't breed corals in our reef tanks, and in some aspects the frags that you might buy could be thought of as the same colony that was collected you know, many years ago and then just passed down through vendors and hobbyists by breaking off frags and growing them. So if we're not going to breed corals, and if we're looking to grow corals as fast as we possibly can, how exactly should we cut them from the colony? Does it really matter? Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and this week we'll be talking about the impact of fragment size, where exactly it's cut from the coral, the orientation that you mount it in, and the presence of any tissue injury on the overall growth and branching of Acropora coral fragments. To do so, we'll be referring to a paper published all the way back in 2003 titled Coral Transplantation, Regeneration and Growth of Acropora Fragments in a Nursery. So let's dive in. So the first topic, fragment origin. Where it's cut from the mother colony could have an impact. Wood frags that are cut from the tips of branches maybe grow better than those that are cut from the base of branches. Well, first off, nearly all new branches grew from the cut ends of the frags. Almost no new branches grew from the center of the frag. And you can see this in your own frags. It's really rare for a branch to split off right from the middle of a frag. Frags that are cut from below the last branching point grew more branches than those cut from above that point. However, this didn't last very long. Over about four months or so, it all evened out and didn't really matter from the perspective of new branches. The frags that were cut from the bases of the branches did grow more skeleton though, so they grew faster. And perhaps they started out a little bit thicker to begin with because, as you know, branches sort of get thinner as they go up. So, when you're cutting your own frags, if you want the fastest growth, cut them from the base of the colony, below the first or the last, actually, branching point if you can. And that's hard to do for obvious reasons. Second topic, fragment length. Longer is generally better. Almost all four and seven centimeter frags grew new branches within four months. A little less than half of the team's one centimeter frags grew new branches in the same period. So longer frags, they're gonna grow more branches. They grew more skeleton than the shorter ones. So it's pretty clear if you can, make sure that when you cut your frags, you cut them at least four centimeters long. The team also looked at combining two three centimeter frags together on the same sort of a growth platform. <laughs> These outperformed the single frags in growth. So while you are reducing the number of frags you have by half because you're mounting them together, these double frag mountings will grow faster than they would if you just mounted them alone. Fragment orientation, does it matter? Well, as you might expect, corals do tend to grow up towards the light. The results back this up and more branches and growth are going in the upper direction towards the surface of the ocean. The actual direction that the frag is mounted in compared to the direction it was originally growing didn't really matter much, you know, upside down, up, upright, uh, horizontally, but the growth was always upright. So orientation really doesn't matter that much when you're mounting frags, just whatever looks best for you. Tissue injuries are an interesting topic. To test if an injured coral might grow slower or not, the team used a water jet to clear tissue from a one centimeter band right in the middle of the frag. Within two months, all the frags had healed and covered this in new tissue, and those frags actually grew new branches from the damaged section as well. And so if you do have a few months for your frags to grow, you could use something like compressed air, water, a toothbrush to remove a band of tissue from the center of the frag. And something about the healing process encourages new axial polyps to grow, and obviously those will then form new branches. So in summary, a frag taken from the base of the colony is going to grow faster than one taken from the tip of a branch. Your frags should be at least four or so centimeters long, unless you want to double them up where shorter lengths might actually grow even faster. The orientation that you mount your frags in does not matter at all. Do what you like. But if you want to encourage branching quickly to get a sort of mini colony going, you could use a toothbrush or something to damage the tissue in the middle of your frags in the branch to increase the chance of new branches forming there. The team does note that the main reason for not preferring the small one or two centimeter frags is just because of algae growing over them. If you can control that in your system better than they can control it in the ocean, then those very small frags could be viable, although they are going to grow more slowly. 
small frags like that also hardly branched at all. So you won't have a nice little colony quickly with such a small frag. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new about Acropora corals and how they grow in our reef tanks after we fragged them. All of these tips are pretty cool, I thought, but of course, we're not going to be able to only use the base of the branch for fragging. To get the base, you're also going to end up with, you know, some frags from further up the branch. So, you know, don't worry about it too much. There is a link to the paper down below. As always, it has a lot more information in it than what I was able to cover here in this video. Please do check it out. It's a good read. Have a great day. Please subscribe if you liked the video. I will see you next time. Until then, be kind to each other. Have a fantastic day. Bye.